the a meeting is in live stream so just press on got it and don't click the meeting and yes we are all good to go cool 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 so hello everybody welcome to the session i am manpreet and with us today we have shunyam so you must have seen with the title you are going to talk about college college is daunting whether it's internships whether it's just managing your social life or academics it's daunting we have been there we are experiencing it so shunyam has I believe she is my senior, so I have seen her. So she has aced the college life. She has been president of society. Uh, I am currently in. She has worked with amazing organizations like Cred, Fampay, and EY, and it's a lot more to it. So Shunim, let's start with your journey and introduction, like your college journey, your bumps you faced in your college journey, and how did you land land up on such cool internships at Cred, Fampay, and EY? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that kind introduction, Mantri. Firstly. and uh, for having me here I'd, i'd like to take a minute to just uh, probably give a huge round of kudos a big shout out to the work that blue learn is doing because had i been a fresher and known about blue learn my journey would have been much much more easier because the way blue learn is kind of democratizing knowledge and creating more such conversations and creating the dialogue around it so thanks for that a uh, pleasure to be here talking about my college life thank you so much for probably inviting me right after exams got over because the nostalgia hasn't yet stopped i have been feeling that since one month and uh, extremely great days i think of course it's daunting as you mentioned you are not sure about what your life is going to be probably after 3 years what career path are you going to pick uh, which friends are you going to make which city are you moving on to like there are so many contentions because the audience is also from 11th and 12th i would want to actually address that uh, thing in the room that there you do not have clarity about a lot of things when you start out but i think what's good about this journey is that uh, over time after probably be connecting with a lot of people after set, settling in and sort of you know gelling in with the environment to get a hang of things and the journey becomes much more smoother so let's let's start with the first question that you had i'm sorry if i'm forgetting that Yeah, yeah, just like you. How did you call your journey start? What are the bumps you faced initially, and then how did you land upon internships? Like at the point I've been mentioning that you you have worked at such cool companies. Everyone in the chat is. How did you land upon those internships? Lovely. Okay, let's let's answer that first. Then, um, I think talking about my internships or the way you mentioned the cool internships, that I I actually sat down and thought about this after you reached me out for the session. and i thought that okay this has been a very thrilling like a very uh, i would say a big grind for me in terms of you know finding these internships landing it out so i really wanted to condense my learnings into a couple of pointers that probably everybody can make note of um and which i feel have a huge success rate in terms of you landing the place you want to number one what worked for me i think was definitely having a clarity of mind the p0 thing that you have to do after diving into college i think is to know where you want to land after 3 years of course you will not have the clarity right at the outset you will not know the answers to all the questions that you might have but it's important to take the initial step of probably trying to find out like for example when i joined the session somebody said how to land a financial internship so everybody knows what your interest where your interest lies in right what your strengths are where do you want to end up probably after 3 years or where do you want to upscale yourself so try to find out these things and bucket them into a few categories or items like okay i am interested in finance i want to explore what consulting is i want to look at product management so on and so forth try to have a bucket list or a laundry list of things you really want to explore before college ends and why i'm emphasizing on this or why am i calling this p0 is because trust me after college you'll have to pick one line you'll probably have to stick to it you'll have to do full justice to it you won't have the time to try and test things out at that time so now is the time that you can explore without any added burden or without any uh, contention of what's actually going on into your cv because you are building it for exploring right you are exploring your learning your going through a lot of hidden trial process uh, which college is all about so i think yeah number one would definitely be having that clarity about what you want to do uh, what this laundry list looks like for you uh, so even i started with that and the personal mission i started on with was I have six semesters in my college. I want to do one internship in each semester. I said that okay, chain internships for ten and ten years, and let's see what exactly is it that I like, what exactly is it that I can compound in, and what exactly am I good at, right? So there is this trifecta that you have to sort of click, which is what you are good at, what you can get paid for, 
what you love doing so it, it's important to sort of have that alignment um so i started making a laundry list of the companies that i want to work at against the skill set that i wanted to learn so if i wanted to do like a finance internship or an ib internship why not do that if i want to do you know something in entrepreneurship something in growth and business and product why not cred fampay and the like so i had my laundry list always with me i was right from the start of course that clarity was not as um, great as it could be that comes with time that comes with experience but at least i did my part of you know having my um, to do prepared in terms of at least giving it a shot the number two thing which is very important when it comes to internships is ask because if you do not ask the answer is always so i think i heard this somewhere in ankur varikus video or something and that right, really right. really yeah it really resonated with me because if you don't ask the answer is always no so trust me a lot of my internships have been off campus have been completely through the route of cold emailing which i don't really say cold emailing i don't like the word cold emailing i think it's a way of connecting with people connecting to their own intrinsic skills um and i think a lot of them have happened through the mutual through the linkedin connections so on so forth so it's really important to reach out reaching out is extremely extremely crucial um and why reaching out is so crucial in 20s is because trust me now is the time that you can actually write a cold email to anybody maybe the ceo of a company that you uh, are inspired by the, the, this is the time no one will judge you you are just a student and trust me 90% of the people out there are there to help you i'll tell you why because after you've gained certain experience you know the struggles that you have been through your core impulse is to actually help people who are facing the same you know obstacles in their journey so i think it's a two fold process don't think of yourself as somebody who is not worthy of help i think if you reach out everybody would do their 1% to help you so what i would do was probably create an excel i been somebody who has almost lived live my entire college life because of excel i I'll really uh, bet on that so um, i used to create this excel sheet write the names of the people in the company i want an internship at at least have 20 30 people to dm on a single day and then against that i would write the status okay i've dm have i received a reply from them or not and trust me it's such an exciting process because sometimes you get to know the conversion rate that out of the 20 people i text 10 people reply five people get on a call with me and probably one person actually refers me to the hr so it's a great process it's a very iterative process where you learn a lot of things where you learn what kind of a message actually evokes a response just writing hi sir hi ma'am can i get an internship i'm good at this trust me they have their inbox filled with those messages do something that actually stands out that speaks volumes about who, how are you as a candidate So a lot of times, I think my cold emails began with this line. Um, I I think I have my cold email opened right here. So I'll just recite the first line of my cold email. It goes something like this: Someone once said, "Great opportunities do not come with the subject line great opportunity." Therefore, here I am trying to make one come my way by seeking to apply for the role ABC at company XYZ. Greetings, ABC. Da 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 da. So I think my first line would always be an opener into the kind of person I am. The kind of it 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 gives some teaser to the person about what the email is going to about be about, right? What the intent of the email is, but at the same time being slightly different, slightly quirky than the rest. So I think cold emailing definitely it can be one whole session that you learn can take. But uh, this is a great skill to have, a great skill to double down on in your twenties, and that really really helps. Uh, so definitely, I think cred somewhere happened on similar lines. I linked, I DM'd a lot of people on LinkedIn. I connected with them in terms of uh, the insights I had about the company, my journey, how I feel I'm a good fit there. If there is any opportunity, I can apply for. And I think I didn't know in within some time it just happened, and uh, it was a great, great uh, learning process for me because from then on I felt that okay, everything is just a you know DM away. It's just a reach out away. So I think that sort of confidence is something everybody should build after trying out, after giving it a shot um, on their own. I have some interesting questions in the chat, but I'll just quickly cover what I had to say. Uh, yeah, I think the next thing is trust me. Even after you do all of these things, the two steps that I told you—that is, having clarity, having your laundry list, and having reached out to people. 
there will be days that you will feel really really dejected that nobody is reaching out things are not actually converting there is so much in your pipeline and you see your friends who are probably interning at the best of places or you see a lot of this you know fomo that our generation is actually uh, grappling it's a problem we are grappling with right but i think on those days what you have to really understand is that you have to do your part of the job you have to show up you have to be present for what you can do from your side so for me just reaching out was not one step i always was very active in terms of everything my college every co curricular my college brought to me be it any competition any corporate, corporate level competition like ey scholarship deloitte gsm um i think ey next gen women so on so forth anything that is happening in your college be present be proactive and take some time to participate i think if you do if you do your role there you never know what lands you where and for me eva and deloitte happened that way so um it's sometimes about just showing up just keep doing what you are probably trying to over index on for a very long time and after you followed these three steps of my recipe of my secret recipe that i wanted to share with all of you the last step is definitely compounding it's a compounding effect one place lands you to the other place it's the network you build it's the friends you make it's the mentors you have who really help you and hand hold you into the entire journey so i think yeah, that was sort of the gist of my you know internships process how i landed there that was super awesome even i was taking notes <laughs> cool okay so one second someone's uh, harsh yeah thank you so we have questions in the chat we'll quickly take them up uh, so one question is how to make most out of linkedin as a student sure i think that's a very interesting question um what i used to do was i used to first of all i am somebody who idolizes people a lot i i really if i have a mentor i could look up to i i go through their linkedin i see what they've done what landed them where how have they maintained it so have the hygiene right that is the linkedin hygiene right keep your network at least 500 plus for you to get visibility on the platform too number 2 try to probably you know ensure that you're active today content making is not just for the creators it's it's sort of a skill to have personal branding has become uh, one of the most important skills to have for anybody um, in today's world so i think start interacting with your audience start interacting with your connections make meaningful connections not just the ones which are a quantifiable number but connect with them with a proper message um hi xyz reaching out because i read this about you know something that you are doing that inspired you plus to connect so on so forth so have a context behind every connection you're making make meaningful connections definitely spoke about the hygiene part of it and i think uh, engaging constantly engaging don't just have your linkedin account for the fancy days that okay with dai wagon internship i'll post it there have it also for your scouting purpose that's exactly what it is made for so be active in the events section and job section uh, what things are people learning i think i used to do a lot of certifications after seeing what is trending today or what people are or uh, doing right and before doing anything i used to connect with people and ask ki okay kya kara and what is the usp of this how can this help me so try to make use of the human capital that is available on linkedin i think uh, one of the best platforms that i explored during pandemic so yeah awesome. hope it helps awesome. well like if you want like full session we have, we just had a session with dravish on linkedin how to optimize the profile mm-hmm. and all we have the recording there on the youtube we'll show it soon in the dm or uh, in the chat okay so next question we have is do we directly dm the founders or someone in hr team i think it's a good very very good question to ask it's always a trade off what do you do right um as i told you i think i have been through all of these questions myself and what i used to do was create like a priority list let me start with the talent team if it sort of you know if there is some conversion happening good enough if it doesn't why not dm the founder with like a very interesting value proposition something that can actually attract the founders eye similarly i think a lot of times in consulting people say that just reach out to the partner directly right so there are these things that you learn with time the thing is that don't have hesitation whether it's the talent team whether it's the founder uh, if you're clear about the value proposition if you're clear about your messaging about what you want to seek out of that relationship out of that internship that you want to do what how is it that you can add value as long as your fundamentals are clear i think doesn't matter who you are dming people will turn and uh, get back to you uh, but it's a trade off i think sometimes you have to 
talk to peers sometimes you have to see who's more active if you see a profile has not been active since years no point dming right if you see that this person is actively recruiting and has just recently posted a reach out to me message why not so things like those one fun fact sometimes what i used to do was uh, people sometimes post their email ids in the i think contact in phone linkedin right or the so about to, part right right i used to see the syntax of the email id is it like at the rate company name dot com company name dot in is it first name dot last name at the rate something something once i had that syntax i used to dm all i used to email all the people whom i couldn't connect with on linkedin someone who's not accepted my request yet why not email them after you've decoded the company email syntax so one hack there one quick hack for everybody um yeah Cool, cool, cool. That that was needed because we we have a hard time finding emails and everything. So that was a good hack. Okay, so we are moving. Let's move to next question because the further questions are more like about interview tips and all. We can take that towards the end, I guess, because we are majorly focusing on college. So okay, Lebron, I'll take your question. But Arnav is asking a question which is relevant. How how are you managing the internships as well as the academics at the same time? it's it's a i think a fair question to us yeah uh, and something that didn't really come very easily or didn't really come organically it never comes organically to any person uh, you know having a balance or as you say multitasking is not just an end state it's sort of a process you have to actively consciously work on multitasking uh, what i did for this was um, i think I'll, i'll take it into some steps so that you guys can get a gist of it Number one, what I did was build a process. I'll I'll talk about a time when I was completely jam packed with a lot of things. I had two internships going on simultaneously. I had an actress wherein they have a national competition every year. I had my internals going on at the same time. So it was like you know blazing fire on all the things that I was working at, all the places I was working at. Um, what I learned at that time was number one, prioritize. Number two, have a repeatable process. how now i'll just give you an insight about how can you do both of these how do you prioritize is by number one having like a calendar for yourself try to have a calendar try to see what your next week is going to look like what are the major things that are there that needs to be done in the next week and how will you take it day by day is something required from my side on monday can i make it priority one is something uh, required from my side in you know collaboration with team can i probably book a session with the team sometime beforehand so what i used to do was i used to have a proper timeline for myself what priorities are number one what priorities can i look at later how can i free up my time by probably you know uh, clearing some of the p0 items that i have on my list and number two i think it's important to automate the regular tasks for example at an active society that i was heading last year we have this one meeting one core team meeting that has to happen every week i made it a point that i kind of auto made these things like every meeting on 8 pm monday so that every organization i'm working at knows that chunyam won't be there from 8 to 9 right and even for me i have this sense of satisfaction that i've given the team all the inputs that it had to probably all the things that we had to discuss we've done that on monday we'll have follow up on next week monday in between we'll have some slack channel wherein we are posting updates so you have to automate a few things by making it repeatable by automation what we mean is try to make the process repeatable something that can be scaled if you're all the time living in a very ad hoc or spontaneous uh, you know sort of a routine which is completely ad hoc basis what demand is coming from which place if my internals are tomorrow i'm studying for it today if my meeting is tomorrow i'm probably uh, burning midnight oil by you know preparing for it till the wee hours of the morning that is eventually going to end up in burnout what you can do to prevent that burnout is probably understanding how 24 hours of your day can be scheduled for me studying was very important probably after dinner because i knew that for that i don't really need any interaction i don't really need to interact with people all the people related i think all the collaborative tasks that i had were somewhere slotted between 9 to 5 9 to 6 all the internships all the um, i think society meetings all the college responsibilities that i had so you have to slot your day in a manner that you're able to accommodate the various things that you're participating in to various organizations that you're accountable to 
Um, so yeah, I think having a calendar, having a repeatable process, and lastly, automating a few things that surely really helps. All uh, right. So just adding on to the that thing which we talked about. So one major change we have had is shifting to offline settings. So even that has become a challenge. Offline colleges and then internships and then so any tip for that? Um, I think it's a very very interesting question to ask because trust me, I felt that. The very rigorous years of my college, I spend those at home. So I'm one of those lucky batches, right? When we had five subjects and uh, it was second year and we were probably giving OBs. So I've been a lucky chap in that matter. But I think for you all, uh, what's really important is to probably uh, be very, how should I say, be very economical with the number of things that you have on your platter. Don't just delve into things for the sake of having a huge thing that you're participating in. Today, I see a lot of people creating a website and saying, I'm founder of XYZ. Don't just do it for the heck of it. Do it because you can actually devote some meaningful time to it. So number one, take things which you can actually cater, which you can actually service. Uh, so it's, it's about being economical in your cho choices and actually compounding in those. And number two definitely would be the fact, as I mentioned earlier, that you have to create an online offline uh, balance today i think a lot of meetings happen even on meets after we have uh, you know sort of gone offline we're meeting in college but we sort of still keep connecting on meets so you have to strike that balance maybe why not do that meet in college only when you can save the two hours of your evening so okay. yeah Awesome. So I guess another answer, like it was like question for everyone, I guess time management is something we really juggle with in college. Okay, so next question is, I would like to take the interview question, any interview tips specifically for questions like tell me about yourself, or any question for me? Right. Um, I'll take the second part first, which is the questions for the interviewer. I think it's a great uh, opportunity in an interview. It's, it's a great five minutes, I think, window for you to show to the interviewer how uh, thoroughly researched you are or how how genuine is your interest in the company. Because sometimes if I knew that the person is probably heading the partnerships of this company, right, I would talk about the recent merchants that they have collaborated with and what's the rationale behind it. What it really helps doing is when you ask something which is relevant, which is in direct context of the organization, which shows that you are well-researched, it just tells the interviewer that you are, you actually have the skin in the game even before joining uh, the particular role or internship, whatever. So I think that surely creates a good conversation and some, I think, questions that you can ask irrespective of whether or not you have clarity into their role, into their journey, is about what will be expected out of you in the role. What is the one quality that uh, people, you know, they should double down on or the best practice that you should start from day one. So questions like these actually show that you are somebody who's looking at the long-term view. You are really interested and you really want to know how can you be better at your job, which you've not even started yet. So these are things, these are questions which just create positive reinforcement in an interview and uh, sort of on new brownie points whenever you are closing the call. And yeah, about the introduction part of it, how do you introduce yourself? Uh, something that I have been very embarrassed by because how can you just simply delve into the strengths of yours, right? I've, I've seen so many interviews where people just start with, okay, I'm the best at this, I'm a perfectionist, I'm a this and that. I think take some time and talk about your story. Talk about the history first. Lay down some background about, okay, I'm from XYZ space. Of course, cover the technicalities, like I'm a graduate student pursuing this, 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 or I'm an undergrad student in final year or whatever. And after that, lay down some context about some context which aligns why you are here in the first place. So if I was in an entrepreneurship interview, I would probably talk about my interest. That ever since I was a kid, I was you know, interested in the startup ecosystem, India today's China, 2006, et cetera. With, a one, with one liner or two contexts, I would just delve into my strengths, how they align with entrepreneurship and any example that I can quote. For example, at Anactus, I'm working on social entrepreneurship model. So try to lay down some history, some storytelling. And I think at CRED, the best uh, question that was asked to me was, uh, hi, Shunim, I want to hear your story. So the interview started like, just tell me about your story. Where have you come from? What is the what is it that excites you about life? So on and so forth. And that really, you know, you just 
snap out for a minute because you're like okay i had this introduction prepared and the person is asking me for my whole history since 2000 since i was born right so i think be spontaneous try to add that human element to the conversation don't make it just technical uh try to tell where you're coming from what your instincts are and what is it that excites you about the role make it relevant you don't have to make it a personal monologue make it relevant but at the same time add that human element to it Right, so agree. This is one thing which is which I also have received to tell your stories when you are introducing yourself. So yeah, great. So next question we have is what skills you have at the time of your first internship. Adding on to that question, which was the next topic I wanted to talk about as well. How did you find your multiple interests, and if you're exploring three to four interests at the same time? So basically, about your skill set. If you are having a multiple skill set, how to double down on one at at a particular time? okay interesting um i think at my during my first internship trust me i i knew nothing more than uh, graphic designing video editing sort of some basic level of digital marketing that was all um this was the case after my 12 fourths happened i had like 2 to 3 months time and i i am not someone who can sit idle right i i want to delve into something so i just started out of out of curiosity to just dabble into graphic designing and things like those um uh, that was the initial skills that i started out with later i think when i started in turning at various organizations what i learned was um trust me wherever you go your skills that really matter are stakeholder alignment uh how do you actually what team skills do you have how do you probably interact with people how do you drive consensus in a team how do you make your team inclusive so on so forth and for that if you have to prove that you have a metal in team skill what you really want to do is probably have some examples of leadership under your belt not just leadership have good examples of followership also it's not just important to lead the team it's also important to be a silent uh, you know team listener contributor uh, so on and so forth so i think wherever you have try to not just work in silos try to take team projects in your college life that will give you great insight about stakeholder management uh, that's one skill that i think i double down on later and um, i think of course it's 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 a very subjective subjective question the reason i'm saying this is because everybody has different interests different industries will demand different skill set for a finance for a, for a finance enthusiast i think having the clarity of financial modeling having the scal- uh, clarity of valuations modeling economics that is extremely crucial for a product management person i'm sure you will be aware of product folks i'm sure you will be aware of uh suhas motwani and a couple more people on twitter tech um right so of course your field your industry requires different skill set that will come only with experience and time but it's important for all those who are in 11th 12th first year start building uh certain skill sets and things you like uh or even if you are free if you have your summer vacation happening don't let it go you know completely by sitting idle i think keep doing something which can um uh, create long term value for you yeah awesome so next question we have a very general doubt is it possible to apply for an internship different from the domain that you are currently pursuing example given me like the person is from engineering and wants to apply for an internship in finance so yeah absolutely i've seen so engineers are people who are doing everything so i am sort of pissed at them ki yaar tum log har jagah ho theek hai so um this is the one thing of course this can happen and i think for even for a fact i am not somebody with a tech background but i have had some experience with analytics i've had some experience with product um i think what is extremely important today is not a degree but is the skill set and a skill set is completely democratized it's completely open source you go to youtube you want to learn something just you know devour into those one hour two hour videos are there because today knowledge is more democratized than ever so if you really want to do something you learn you create your portfolio in your cv where you've written the skill set probably attach a google drive link again where you can you know where if somebody clicks on it they can see the project you have worked on if i am applying for a finance internship why just simply say that okay my skill set is modeling i can also sort of you know create it create a hyperlink there people can click on it and see uh, see the models that i've created to so start having that uh, i think mindset of making your learning more practical more applicable try to apply it even more and doesn't matter where you're coming from of course unless the company has certain constraints 
sometimes for example flipkart apm is not open for uh, non tech people right so of course if there are certain constraints you can't really surpass those but wherever possible just keep learning don't uh, create that uh, glass ceiling in your mind that i'm not from this background this is not for me right so there's a next question i am not sure like if you have experienced that but still how to manage competitive exam preparation during internship <laughs> and the worst person to ask is i left it midway uh, i have i think I, i started preparing for cat sometime back in january last year i was uh, i want to be modest but i was doing pretty well i, I thought that that's the forte i want to crack and probably that's one thing i want to dedicate my next 10 12 months of uh, college life to but it just happened that i uh, started in turning at cred and once i started in turning there i met a couple of like minded folks I spoke to them about why I want to pursue an MBA, masters, and I found that after con, uh, you know, having a conversation with a lot of them, I learned that masters is for me, but not at this point in time. Maybe after certain work experience, maybe see the job market today is. Um, ex- I'm not sure about the recessionary effects. I don't want to comment on it, but job market today is really flourishing. If you have an opportunity, if you can experience, why not do that before actually grabbing? you know masters in something mba is basically about management right you have to bring a certain skill set a core skill set before actually delving into it there are both sides of the debate to it but i found that for me it made more sense later so definitely i started preparing uh, and i think from my experience is something that you have to dedicate your 100% time to uh, it's truly competitive people who have been preparing for 7 8 months it's it's a matter of i think point something something percentile so it's really disheartening at times um not the right person to comment on this because i left it right when you know it was speaking so mm-hmm. I'll, i'll save my two cents on it awesome so i'll take more questions for those so let's talk about a hot topic which is debate on paid and unpaid internships we juggle we have a very good opportunity a very lucrative opportunity but we are told you have to do paid internships paid internships don't do unpaid internships so what's your take on it I think that's an interesting question and something that everybody goes to when they start out. Your first internship might not be the one offering you, you know, thousands and thousands of bucks. It's it's going to be a steady ride. It's going to be a um, very subjective ride for everybody because some of you might be getting campus placement, some of you might be getting placed off campus, some of you might be interning in a uh, in an industry which is loaded with cash and of course they pay that much to the interns and some of you might be interning in very very ni- uh, you know niche and unconventional places so it's a very subjective answer and a very subjective call to me um however if i have to sort of give my two cents on it that would number one be that it depends on the role it absolutely depends on the role if you are probably interning um uh, as a growth intern you have to see what the general industry standards are what the stipend is uh, if you're in a pming setup or if you're in software development of course expect that there will be some type and right so you have to gauge from the role itself whether uh, it's going to be something which will be paid on paid on so but it sort of depends on the role as well the pay uh, i think even the stipend depends on the pay on, on the kind of role you're in, uh, entering into number two depends on the company if you are uh, with a very you know new startup or dc startup or maybe a pre launch team for example a couple of my internships have not been paid um uh, and i'm completely okay with the fact because what i double down on was people was the experience and trust me you are living in india it's not going to be a piece of cake all the time so you can't compromise on the experience just by saying yaar pay nahi hai to main karungi nahi if it's the experience you really want to build if it's the kind of role that excites you and if you feel the trade off is not huge you're not putting on like uh, 24 hours in a day and not getting paid that's definitely not uh, worth it but if you feel that it's something which is going to give me uh, a good sense of experience and i know that the company is not in the position to pay and i'm here because of my own personal choice it makes absolute sense right for you to be there and even if it's unpaid so i think it's a subjective call we have to take it basis our role is it a trainee role is it a campus ambassador role is it a full time intern role number 2 it's about the company as i mentioned and about the role um but i think a few points that i always thought about the paid unpaid internships is the fact that don't sit back or don't 
um, leave the table when it's most need for negotiation. So for me, every time I would interview with a company, I would prepare this question that what if the person asks me, what is the type and I'm preparing? So try to talk finance with the peers, right? Try to make it a common practice that you're talking finance. It should not be a taboo. It should not be something that you keep it under the covers and under the carpets and you don't really talk about it. I, for one, have been somebody who uses Glassdoor, who sees what the industry standards look like, how should I negotiate, what my experience is, what my peers are getting. So there is this example, and I think there is this very fancy um, quote that goes, I was expecting 58,000, somebody paid me 60,000. I talked to my peers, they were getting 70,000. So unless you start talking about finance, you don't know what exactly is the worth of that. Uh, role right so you have to sit on the table you have to negotiate but at the same time you have to sort of in your background understand there is a trade-off between the role the company signs and your own experience um yeah awesome that was a very great answer okay cool so moving on to the next thing about mentors we know how important mentors are in college life and as usual as well so what has been your journey in finding mentors and why do you think it's really important i think i would probably be half of what i'm doing today had it not been for my mentors it's as i mentioned early on in the conversation and someone who really looks up to people these people can be from your school they can be your seniors they can be people you connect with on LinkedIn. These can be your own peers. Sometimes your own friends really, uh, you know, inspire you. Or these can be your uh, work mentors, your buddies uh, in at work, your reporting manager at work, so on and so forth. So for me, I think I've been lucky enough in life to find a lot of people throughout my journey. And uh, as you mentioned, why are mentors important? Definitely, I think three things that I can think of. Number one, whatever role you, you are into, mentors are the one. Uh, you know, so they are, they are the people who will help you with the requisite hand holding. They'll sort of guide you, they'll sort of mentor you into and shape you into the right person for that role. So this is the role of the mentor. They'll not just give you complete hindsight and insight about the role you're entering into, but they'll also make sure that you actually possess the skill set for it. They'll kind of enhance your journey all the way out. Number two, I think they're the ones who accentuate your strengths. Your mentors are your well-wishers. They really want you to play to your strengths. They'll time and again tell you that, you know, Manpreet, you're good at this. Keep double downing on this, over-index on this thing. And, you know, they'll make sure that your strengths actually come to the fore and come in the limelight. And number three, in your feedback calls, they'll be the one who will never shy away from calling out your weaknesses. And not just calling out your weaknesses, but telling you what is it that can actually, you know, uh, help you improve multiple times if you start improving a couple of those pain points. So I think they are honest. They are somebody who only want to want you to push your envelope, and they are there for uh, probably handhold you into this new journey that you are uh, getting into. So I think yeah, that's um, somebody is asking. Can you give an experience where your mentor helped you? I think um, all the time that I was at bed. The IPL time and everything, I I can't even mention how many times have I been on a Slack huddle all day long with my mentor, really bugging them with what to do about this product feature, what to do about this campaign going like this at this time, what to do about this merchant doing this. So I think these are the people you can actually be completely honest with, completely transparent with. And they are the ones who take sometimes even take the blame for you, right? They'll say, okay, it's, it's on me. It's not on you. you. You're just learning. So I think these are some things that really help you uh, have a more nuanced approach towards whatever you're doing. So, yeah. Awesome. So let's open the floor for questions from the participants. Anyone who would like to unmute and ask the question can raise their hand, please. Anyone? Anyone who wants to ask the question can raise their hand. Otherwise, we have questions there in the chat. Okay, till the time you guys are raising your hands. Okay, we have Rudrik. Okay. Mm, I'm asking you to unmute. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Um, the voice is very low. If you can just speak to us louder. Uh, is it better now? Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. So, uh, hi everyone. So uh, basically, ma'am, I have this uh, question that you know when you're learning 
or when you're in the learning phase, uh, you know, there's this silent period you go through, like uh, you're just learning, you know, you're nowhere yeah. right now, as in you're yeah. just learning. So you, know, you feel like uh, left out that former that, okay, everyone is doing this thing. everyone. So when you even, yeah. even you're progressing, these, this thing, you know, kind of sometimes yeah. pulls you down. So, you know, how to deal with that, like, you know, how to deal with this thing, that it's okay, that, you know, when we, because uh, right now, uh, at this stage, I'm very, uh, it's not like I have something planned, it's that I'm just exploring a lot of things, I want to do content writing also, and I'm a computer science student, so, you know, I'm just confused, and uh, just, you know, looking at things, so it feels like everyone is sorted out, and all that, but, so that, how to get how to deal with, the, with that thing and to progress? That's my question. Rudrika, that's a lovely question. And trust me, um, the way you mentioned you're exploring a couple of things, right? The word explore itself says that you're half, uh, you're halfway down there. You've already done your 100%. You're, you're showing up for what you want to do, right? As I mentioned. Um, trust me, it's a very good question. If you see, um, I had this almost sort of a 10 month break between the two internships I had, that is family and the other EVA internship I, I did. And that period for me was really stressing me out because I'm somebody who wants to do things quickly at a fast pace. It's just that some people are, you know, they function that way. I just want something to keep me busy, something to probably, you know, a place where I can learn and a place where I can contribute. And for 10 months, I, I just felt that, okay, I want to land something in finance or consulting and it's just not happening what to do. At that time, I was going through all of this corporate finance and student courses and a couple more Yale University. And trust me, that was the time I learned the most. Because every single time, my own competition was just me. I wanted to sort of, uh, you know, raise the bar every single time with every course I was doing. And there is this quote that goes, I think Nabal Ravi Khan somewhere said in his podcast, we are like hunters, you know, we are, we are like lions. We are not like robots who keep working 24-7. We are like lions, we hunt. Then we reflect, we just sit around for some time, we sort of reflect on the hunting that we've recently do, recently done, and then we move on to the next hunt of our lives. So I think it's important to take that some time out for yourself, for you to reflect on the skills that you have, for you to reflect on what is it that you want to uh, probably, you know, enhance, furnish in your own armory of skill set. Um, since you're taking out this time for you to, you know, probably do all of these courses, I'm sure this is something you can reflect whenever you're reaching out to any recruiter next. You can talk about, I've done XYZ course. I used to tell a lot of people, you know, I've done finance, my financial modeling. Here is a model that I've prepared. It really helped me. I think it starts opening doors for you because you're a candidate who's not just done something for the sake of it. You are also trying to implement it in real life and telling the other person how to add that value. Of course, you'll feel dejected at times. Of course. Every day won't be uh, a good one. But trust me, life cannot be led if you're completely comparing yourself every day with your peers and everyone around. There are going to be people who are going to be setting other benchmarks and so on and so forth. But you have to understand your journey will take its own course. It's yours and yours alone. And let that, you know, uh, let that journey really unveil itself. So just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, be good at it. And trust me, your, your destination will find you. Don't be in a hurry to reach there. So don't be in any rush. I think if you are doing everything possible, it will come to you very soon. Awesome. So focusing on journey to admin destination, that's so important. Okay. So Mridu, uh, I'm asking you to unmute. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, how did you get your first internship? Uh, what did your profile look like? And can you just elucidate the whole inter like first internship journey since it's like so nerve wracking for everyone? Absolutely. Uh, trust me, it's not going to be a glamorous one. You might have not even heard about it. Uh, my first internship was somewhere in October of 2019. Um, it was my first semester of college, I believe. Yeah. It was my first semester of college and it was an internship at this place called College Quest. I got it uh, through, you know, on-campus uh, internship process. My role was all about creating a few graphics, managing their social media and um, looking at creating, you know, some outreach about what they do. So College Quest was this place which, you know, helps you with, uh, gives you guidance about how to land, you know, some institute abroad, how to pursue a higher education abroad. So all this had to do was a lot of reach out, a lot of marketing for them, so on and so forth. It was an unpaid gig. It was uh, 
all by myself i didn't even have any mentor mentee connect but i did it for the fun of it and trust me a lot of times on email my mentors would say you know you're doing a great job they also gave me the access to their instagram account because i was one intern who really wanted to you know change their instagram feeds on so forth so i think even when the you know the tide was not in my favor the odds were not in my favor i was just a fresher my my profile somewhere looked like my school my college probably my uh school mein jo ek do cheeze you do debates and pr of some, some mu and all of that i think it was just that graphic designing video editing and with that i started my journey i never knew after this metfi would happen when metfi happened things started you know uh, really shaping themselves up i found the right mentors people started looking at what i was good at uh, i found i started finding projects that were meaningful to me but i think it's all about taking that initial baby step so i believe cred happened because college quest happened someday so you never know what leads where you have to take that baby step you don't have to judge the organization on the face of it judge what you are doing there your role is what you make out of it if you want to really take initiative you can take it anywhere even at an ngo so if you love it just be the very best version of yourself absolutely i agree so uh ashish will take a question then we have something to talk about and then we'll take a questions again ashish i'm asking you to unmute yeah hi shunyam hi manpreet uh i Hello. got two questions uh how important a good college is and which year should we start applying for internships good question manpreet and i we are nodding like okay you fit where it uh really helps everybody okay i think college definitely um it's it's one of the one of the ecosystem what what is college or company or school actually mean it's it's basically an ecosystem that's going to give you the incubation you need right the opportunities you need the peer ecosystem you want to meet the professors who probably invest in you so on so forth so definitely it truly really matters a lot of times when i was in my 12th standard i used to think course over college is the right to way, right way to go about it had i uh been you know had i had the experience i had today i probably would have looked at it from college over course perspective ki double down on the college you are at even if you have to compromise the course here and there uh, that somewhat um, i think a good thing to a good lens to look at it from of course it depends on uh, your course or call uh, the second thing is definitely i'm forgetting what you asked after college ashish would you like to ask me from the old And would you uh, like to ask a second question? Yeah, uh, which year should we start applying for internships? I think right from the start. Why not right from the start, right? Because engineers, I think they are lucky in this matter. They have four years. They can do research. They can do internships. We, for that matter, we just have three years. The sooner you start, the better. Because it takes about its own sweet time for you to, you know, or learn the skill set like how to write an email, how to reach out to somebody. how to probably uh, you know interact in a group so on so forth these are very subtle things that you learn as time passes of course you have some of these already but to kind of uh, have a fineness in all of this you it takes time so i think the sooner you start the better for me i wanted to do anything that i can starting from semester 1 and it really helps because by the time you're in semester 2 you're under no time pressure is just the thing so i think don't your mark any year for this because maybe second year is when you're not able to get it second year is maybe the time when um something of the sort of pandemic happens because trust me when i was in second year pandemic happened and a lot of people had these internship offers to vote so don't really your mark your yours for it salm internship karenge the sooner you start the better okay and did you meet kunal sir at grad we definitely used to have uh, sessions with the uh, kunal i think i don't know why that the uh, question everybody is interested in we used to have this never had like a one on one interaction with the, with him but uh, of course it's a very flat organization anybody can dm him anybody can reach out and uh, he's got no ears about him so yes okay. awesome awesome thank you ashish bharat i'll take a question next so this is one thing you would love to talk about which is hustle culture and it's so much <laughs> in in gen z and everything hustle culture hustling burnout so anything you would like to say about that till what point is it relevant and when is the point you should know you need to stop now um i think when people say that hustle is toxic what they're trying to say is that fomo and um, burnout is toxic 
when hustle leads you when you are into hustle just for the sake of you getting promoted by other people doing certain things you are doing uh, you know probably you are entering a startup ecosystem just because your friends are in a growth role your friends are in a pm role i think that would lead down to burnout that would lead down to toxic hustle or that would lead down to wrong choices being made because of fomo that's where hustle is wrong when you're hustling because you want to explore and trust me 20s are the best time to explore we don't romanticize about our career much but we should we should definitely start thinking from it from a lens of let's explore different sides of me right let's explore what am i good at what is my skill set uh, what are my core strengths what can i improve so i think uh, hustling from the from the point of view of exploring is extremely healthy is extremely productive because it tells you how to sort of manage various things in your life be it academy or be it co curricular be it personal life be it social life so on so forth so it's definitely healthy what's not healthy is the fomo or the toxic um choices that you make just because you want to look cool in your blog awesome awesome right so there's one question in the chat i'm not sure if i should ask or not but i guess it's coming out of self doubt so it's important to address it how much looks matter to get hired it is uh, i would say it's um, not something that is completely not not at all relevant to our conversation right. trust me it's it's of course definitely about your metal it's definitely about your skills i don't even know why that question came up in the right. first place i right. mean why do you even look at it from this lens because uh, trust me in an interview if you have to talk about then you start talking you start showcasing your entire personality your veneer your uh your looks are just one one part of it that will fade the moment you start speaking so the more you develop your uh you know your own persona your own personality the more you invest in yourself i think that that's what really matters having a personality and having good looks i think these are two different things personality is a whole microcosm of your uh, intellect of your uh you know sort of the values that you believe in the things that you have really excelled at right they are way beyond the looks and i think this question is coming straight from a place of vanity so don't uh, really double down on things which are not uh, even permanent in life right it's a very transient thing to have it's a it's something that i feel everybody is beautiful but what is important is to have a beautiful mind so right. why not invest in a beautiful mind when there is time absolutely so i'll take a question next parat sending you the request yeah hey good evening uh, Yeah, I just wanted to ask that how do you guys have you increase your uh, improve your communication skills? What I think is at the end of the day, it's all about speaking to another person, right? So I just wanted to know that. That's a great question to ask. Um, I think as you mentioned, everything everything ultimately boils down to communication. You wouldn't believe, but a lot of problems in the organizations that I worked at were just stemming out of miscommunication, not being able to articulate your thought process in the right way. not being able to use the right words which can you know actually appeal to the other person so it's not just about the technicalities of communication it's also about the the tone the language the sort of uh, narrative that you pick while communicating and to learn this the best thing to do is actually go out there talk much i think i've, I've also as you mentioned kunal shah I, i i used to see his interviews way before joining and used to say that uh um, you know don't be afraid to look like a fool in front of people if you want to learn something you feel that okay my english is not good enough and so on so forth try to talk try to have a peer group which has probably the best english and start learning by talking to them so actually be out there ask questions talk as much as you can if you're afraid of stage try to take stage uh facing you know roles try to probably next time apply in stage management so the more you feel that this is the thing that you want to probably improve jump right into it with a leap of faith because the more you practice the more you uh, make yourself acquainted with it you will never know you will get better with it um, so yeah i think do check out ankur variku's uh, video also on this i think he he is also posted something so manpreet is a huge fan i think uh, yeah <laughs> Awesome, cool. So one again, addressing the elephant in the room. Thoughts on dropout. I have this question on my personal message box that thoughts on dropout culture that is starting in India. Okay. Trust me, I I usually don't comment on things I don't have a two. I have my two cents on. I truly don't have a lot of clarity on this, but I think again with a lot of my friends who are or taking a dropout, it actually comes from a place of number one clarity. Dropout. 
it it either comes from clarity or it either comes from pursuit of seeking clarity it never comes from a place of confusion don't look at it from a negative lens every single time either you have the clarity that you want to do what you want to do two years from now one year from now or you can crack the competition better next year that's the clarity or the next thing could be that you are in the pursuit of seeking that clarity and for that you need time trust me money will find its way back to you time never will and we just have two currencies right we have money which can go on compounding exponentially but time will just be the same for everybody 24 hours every day so if you can take some time out of your life for yourself it's not it's nothing to be ashamed of it's nothing to be uh, probably and don't do it just for the sake of you know everybody is having this drop out culture in india and we are doing this just for the sake of it do that when you have clarity have your own playbook that i am taking this um, year off you know for probably pursuing this goal that i've kept for myself so yeah i think that that's the only thing that i can comment on Awesome, awesome. So there's one last thing I'd like to cover, and then if anyone of you has question and want to ask something to show him directly, is it possible to create a balance between social life, work life, and college life? Because I've been seeing people that you need to compromise in one. There's it's impossible to create a balance between three. But what would you say about it? I think it's not just about whether it's possible or not. We don't have choice. for us to lead a happy healthy prosperous life which i feel is the trifecta of life right happiness prosperity health for us to have that holy trinity all uh, aligned in our lives it's really important to take time out for everything um i sort of gave a thought to this question that you had and i really found out one thing that balance is not truly an end state it's sort of a process you have to consciously work towards creating balance how can you do that probably um So I I was going through like a creative block of sorts myself. I think sometime back, and what I did was I thought that okay, I'll do one thing for my mental uh, or intellectual stimulation every day that is readable, one thing for my health, which is probably hit the gym, and one thing for my spiritual self, which is like to take twenty minutes out in a day and just either be in nature or be in my room with lights off and just uh, you know go in that Zen zone where you're just thinking nothing. There is no thought, there is no past, future in your mind, right? So it's important to kind of dedicate time to your different dimensions of life, be it social life. Try to touch, uh, try to be, you know, touch base with your friends. Try to interface with your friends. Try to be in constant contact with them because after college, I think it's difficult to keep in touch. So touch base with them as frequently as you can. Uh, have some time dedicated to your social life, professional life, so on. So forth. So it's it's sort of a conscious effort that you have to make towards achieving that balance. Yeah, absolutely. So, the Abhay, you can. Do you have any other question? Otherwise, you can lower down your hand, please. Uh, next, if I'm just asking it one minute. Yeah. Uh, hello. Am I audible? Okay. So here's the question that, uh, as you said, uh, we should have the clarity in our decision and everything. So, uh, how to get that clarity in everything? like maybe in get uh, while choosing uh, our under graduation degree so for that uh, we need to choose our specialization so how to get that clarity that i am good in finance or i am good in so and so and even in case of internships as you said so that so called clarity that's my biggest problem so that's that's a, that's a great that's a very good question to ask So when trust me, uh, somewhere when you were asking this question, I was like, "Dude, I can't answer because clarity is something that you're seeking all the time. Even for that matter, I don't know how uh, my life would look like probably six months down the line. So it's it's something you're in constant pursuit of. You'll never have full clarity or visibility on what life's plans are for you or what your plans are for life, right? Uh, but what's really important in the process is number one. I think there is some book which said try to find what you're good at. what you can be paid for and what you love doing and that framework has really helped me because when i think of it from my lens like what exactly is it that my core strength is uh, what exactly is it that i can sort of you know do better than others or do in really less time what is it that i enjoy doing right it's icky guy correct uh, so i think that framework really helped me think from a very clear thought process that okay this is what excites me 
and doing this for the next you know whatever years of my life will never really bore me because that's something i can i can enjoy as a career i can enjoy as a skill set i can enjoy as a professional right so i think that's something that you have to look at try to play to your strength don't try to copy others or don't try to copy an already set path for yourself but at the same time i think some clarity that you said about if you should do a finance internship if you should do this internship or not some clarity comes after trying and testing things out for yourself probably before doing an analytics internship why not take a course on it and see if that excites you probably before uh, taking a six month commitment of product management just go through the resources and see if that really intrigues you if that's something that you want to build a career out of so just participate in things just try to have get a teaser of things by you know uh, meeting people connecting with people who are already doing that for example i think a lot of times when i wanted to break into startups i used to talk to people who are already doing that ask them what their work looks like and i saw i always try to see if that is the kind of uh, day that i want to have right so a lot of people say founder market fit or probably product market fit for your career it's important to see role personality fit is your personality aligned with the role that you're looking at is the role aligned with the personality that you have things like these try these exercises out for yourself have a pen have a paper try to write all the possible things you are interested in try to see what you are probably excelling at try to see what is it that intrigues you and you will be able to figure out your number one number two number three have your backup plans but definitely have the one thing that you have set your eye on so i hope that really helps awesome webha we'll take your question and after that yasha i guess we can give the form to everyone to unmute sure i am i'll i'll probably have to drop off in another yeah. two sure, so sure, maybe sure. we'll take the class yeah. yeah hello can you hear me uh, yes sir yeah Uh, so my question was uh, as a fresher when we'll be entering into a college we would have very less skill set and knowledge compared to a third year uh, student who is already in college so how do we stand out from them to get an internship in first year with very less knowledge than them but ever tell me one thing why will your competition be with the third year no your competition you'll also be competing against the first years you're a fresher you will be in the same boat as other freshers in your own class in your own yes. batch so your competition would not be for the role which is specifically made or reserved for the third year people for the second year folks so bringing that expertise to the table you will take it step by step your first internship might not be jp morgan might not be morgan stanley but you have to wait for it you have to really yes. work hard for it you have to earn it and i think yeah. what surely stands out in any uh, internship or in i i also share like a cold email if i have maybe mantri mantri can put it on the blue learn channel yeah um, sure. it's about one of Yeah, it's my one of my friends who wrote to the Edelweiss founder. I think the CEO. He had no experience in finance or nothing, and he just asked her that, "See, if you hire me, I'll be the best person out there." And she eventually went on to post that on LinkedIn. So I think it's somewhere the resilience that you should have right from the first semester, first year of the college, that this is a skill that I want to have, and this is how I'm planning to work for it, for earning it. And trust me, down the line, if you have that spark in you, people identify that in you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vibhav, and thank you, Shunyam, for doing this. We have a lot of questions, and I guess college is such a topic you can't condense that in one session. So, probably okay. looking forward to more sessions with you. We had a great response. People have a lot of questions even now, but we are we have time constrictions. But we we'll look forward to another session with you, Shunyam. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Or I had a wonderful one hour and. Never knew that time went on so quickly. Thanks, Manpreet, and thanks the team at uh, Blue Lobby. Thank, Thank you, Shunam. You guys, if you have, if you want to have a conversation, you guys can stay. We will we'll give you forms to unmute.